So I've tested some weird looking clubs on my channel before, but this is one of the weirdest and one of the most expensive. So these wedges are from a company called Moore. Now they're from the USA, and I'm gonna start off by talking about the price. For each individual wedge, they're $429. And the reason why I'm talking dollars is because that's the price they've told me, and I don't think they're available in the UK just yet. You might notice they look very unusual, very futuristic, almost like a concept wedge. And that the reason for that is because there is so much adjustability, which I'm gonna dive into, but also talking about the actual wedge itself, it's made from one billet of steel. So they reckon they've made it really precise on the lofting and the gauging, the shape and everything else. The other thing that's really unique is the hosel. They've saved around about 50 grams and where they've placed that is more into the head to give more accurate shots and to help you be more precise, apparently. The other thing that's really unique is that you can change the bottom of the golf club, this bounce and grind section here, almost like the flange. You can take these two screws out and you can customize the bottom to help either suit your game, your angle of attack, or even the golf courses you play. And also, there's another little bolt here. If you unscrew that, the shaft comes out of the head and therefore you can actually replace the face or the whole head. You can't change the loft. I must admit, as soon as I saw this wedge for the first time, I was like, Oh my goodness, can you like twist the loft? Can you make it more, more upright? But no, that's not the case, you can just change it. And then the face, look at this face. So again, it's been machine milled, it's rough to touch. And at first I didn't think there was actually proper grooves on it because almost it's so eye-catching. It just almost looks like it's like a piece of jewelry, but there are, there are grooves as well there. Now that's all the technology and that all sounds great, but there's three things apparently going to help you as a golfer be better at. First off, more spin on short shots. So if you can, you've got a tight pin, you need to attack it, you need to get that ball to stop, apparently it's going to help you. Also, because of the shorter hosel and the fact that it's set backwards as well, I mean, that's quite a cosmetic difference. It's almost got onset. I'm not sure if that might even help if you shank it a little bit. I'm not quite sure I might even test that in this video. But what they're saying, because of that, it's going to be really good on accuracy. They've managed to move the weight more in the bottom and the onset is going to help you hit it straighter towards your target. And finally, as well with that hosel, because it's slimmer and because it's more differently designed, out the rough, which we're definitely going to test today, it doesn't snag up or clag in the rough and twist the face. Bold claims. It should do all of that for $429. Right, let's get in some, let's get testing it. I've got it in a 56 and a 52. I'm intrigued, I'm excited. Right, first impressions before I hit this opening shot, that is a bizarre looking wedge. It, you know what? The shaping of it, everything that's going behind it, kind of looks a bit gimmicky. I don't want to call it that just yet because I want to stay open-minded, but it, it almost strikes me as like, if, if a mate of mine turned up playing with this, I'd be like, what is this thing? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure just yet. It's a very, very unique look. It's certainly not a classic looking wedge at all. Right, let's get in a few short shots first. It needed a lot of spin, that was a bit fiery. Um, first impressions off the face, quite a hard feel that first shot. I've, uh, I fired it a bit far past, this is the 56 degree. Hey, well, that grabbed. That was like a little low spinner. Give me a few more from this location. Go. Right, bar that last one, the rest of them weren't great, I'll be honest with you. A little bit clunky from my end but I'm dead honest, I've not chipped for a while. I need a little bit more practice. Feel-wise, it definitely felt hard off the face. It's not soft, but I did see glimpses of evidence that there was some decent spin in there. However, whenever I've tested a brand new wedge right out of the packet, you normally get a lot of spin early doors. Let's hit a few more from around the green, try and form a bit more of an opinion on this wedge.
I spent a bit of time chipping with these wedges and also hitting some bunk shots as well. They feel nice. Like, they're not bad wedges. Um, they're a little bit harder than, let's say, a super soft forge wedge. Um, the shaping is quite unique on those short chips around the green. I did notice almost like the front edge. Mentally, it feels almost like it's more like a spoon, almost like you scoop the club underneath the ball, which isn't, again, it's not a terrible feeling. Um, okay, whether they're worth $429, I'm not quite sure about that. What I'm going to test on next is one of the first claims, spin on short shots. Now, I love spin. There's no, kind of, no hidden secret, I love spinny golf shots. So let's pitch up maybe about 40 or 50 yards out with the 56 and see if we can get some proper spin into the green. All right, so I'm about 50 yards out. And just a note, I'm not expecting actual back spin from this range, but I am expecting the ball to stop pretty quickly. Let's see how I get on. Okay, so this one, the first one, I, I hit a bit heavy. <laughs> that was my fault and it ran out, but I can't really count that one. That was a bad strike. Now these four, this is really interesting. I've tried to land them all near the flag. Pitch mark, pitch mark, and two over there. And they've stopped nicely. They've stopped nicely. What you'd kind of expect from a brand new wedge. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I'm not blown away by that, but I can't fault it either. Not bad there. Okay, so this is an interesting part of the club, the neck. The big talking point this, because they've almost onset it, and the fact they've made it lighter, and the fact they've shaped it differently, it's supposed to be much better out of sand and in the rough. Now I've hit some out of the sand already. The only thing I found, I didn't particularly see the performance was any different to a normal 50, 60 degree wedge. But what I did notice when you open the face up, so when you really lay it open, because there isn't as much of a hosel on the, on the actual leading edge there, it did actually feel slightly flatter. It almost felt like I could open it up more. But again, that was just mental rather than actual performance based. Then they're also saying it's gonna be better out of rough. Now, on a shot like this, this isn't my favorite shot. I'm like 85 yards away from this flag. So it's like a three quarter satin wedge for me. And I could do with any help I can get from this situation. Now, typically in rough, the grass has a tendency to almost wrap around the neck of a traditional golf club and can force it to close and even open. So they reckon it's going to be more accurate from this location. Let's give it a test. So like I said, I'm 85 yards away. I've got five golf balls out in all different variety of rough positions. The last one being probably the worst. Let's see how it gets on from here. The other thing to call out, and this is really interesting as well. I'm not sure the kind of science behind this, but also it's quite long. Like this sand wedge is pretty much the same length as my nine iron. So it does actually feel a little bit more powerful. And again, I'm not sure if that's going to help it out of the rough, potentially help with a bit more club head speed. Who knows? Let's hit this first one out of the rough. It's out and it's slightly short on the green. Not bad, but not great. Next one. Oh. <laughs> right, I'm gonna have to clean my wedge after that one, because even for $429, it's not gonna stop me fatting a wedge. That's sure not finished well at all. Next one. That was nice. That was really nice. Yeah, I mean, that wasn't a dead hard lie from that rough, but that did come out very, very nicely and it's absolutely down the flag. Yeah, again, that's not bad. This last one's gonna be the most interesting one because this one's this one's in the worst lie. Can I have a quick look at this lie first? Because it's uh, this is a horrible little lie. If you, if you found this from 85 yards away, we've nestled in a little deeper spot here in the rough. 
Now, again, that could, I need to clean the face in a minute, that definitely could have the tendency of dragging the face and almost wrapping it over. The grass could almost wrap around the neck. Let's give it a clean and see how it does from here. Oh, it's come out a bit thin. <laughs> Is it going to catch a piece? Yeah, you know what? It's still on the green. It wasn't my best shot in the world, but it was on the green. So as I wrap up my summary of this wedge, um, there's a few things I want to talk about first. I mean, this could be the wedge of the future. Who knows? I mean, it, it, to me, it strikes me as almost like a prototype for something that's going to come out in five or 10 years with the adjustability and the fact that it looks so different to a traditional wedge. And the fact it's so many different assets, the fact it's got a, a billet of steel, you can change the face, you can change the flange, it's got this fancy shaft in, it's talking the talk, but comes down to it. You have all the technology in the world, all the stories in the world, but when you're out on the golf course, it's you, a club, a ball, and the golf course. For me, it's not worth $429 of anybody's money. Guys, stay tuned, lots more to come, and we'll see you next time.